coverage continues here on News Nation. We're looking at this scene, and this area is the point of our focus, the Rainbow Bridge connecting the U.S. and Canada's law enforcement officials, armored vehicles, and all the rest have been on that scene um, this afternoon. And uh, correspondent Laura Engel joins us now, and she's, I know, like everybody else, been working her sources. This vehicle explosion, we know, Laura, two are dead, and we're trying to figure out exactly what else may have taken place. What have you learned, if anything? Right. I've been talking with multiple law enforcement agencies, many of them retired, uh, taking a look at this to kind of break it down and say what is happening right now. And of course, there is such a robust law enforcement presence in the northeast of the United States. So you're talking about highly specialized teams uh, that are working in conjunction with each other uh, with specialized equipment either that are there now or heading that way and you know we were just reporting on your show yesterday uh, on this new report that the governor of new york was talking about that the state was facing an increase and a threat of violent attacks is this related we still don't know uh, but the new york governor kathy hochel as you mentioned on her way and announced millions yesterday uh, millions of dollars in resources some of that going to state colleges to monitor online chatter for hate speech and violent rhetoric uh, but also uh, just overall for this type of situation uh, here on Long Island. You know, we would talk to a Nassau County executive who talked about bringing in extra police to this area for these very threats. Uh, but as we look at what's happening there at the border and incredible pictures you're showing there uh, from those cameras, um, you know, some of the law enforcement teams I've been talking to say, you know, when a vehicle explosion happens, the information comes out very slowly. And what it, if it's a car bomb, uh, people are giving up their lives. And many times that is for shock value. They're running into that toll booth. Are they going to be hurting a lot of people? Uh, the answer is no, unless there's a lot of cars in that area. So it's going to make news around the world. And whoever did this, if it was intentional, knew that, Connell. Yeah, that picture on the left side of your screen, which comes from Customs and Border Patrol, uh, sources, Laura, gives us an idea of how much damage was done um, by this explosion. To go back to your reporting from yesterday on the threat specifically against New York, I remember from our conversation that there was nothing specific, right? They weren't, for example, worried specifically about one of the border crossings, um, Canada in particular. There was a, they, they didn't at least disclose to us anything that they knew about specific threats, did they? No, and we had tried to get that report, to get that report in our hands so we could see exactly what these threats were. And, of course, that report was not released publicly, and it usually never is. Uh, but overall, the violent threats uh, that have been made, that have been picked up uh, with intelligence, uh, knowing that some, there is chatter going on, we don't know if this was a part of it. Um, but there was a lot of concern about it, and that's why the governor came out and talked about this, these threats and talked about talking to your people, talking to your kids. Uh, if you see something, say something. We can't say it enough. I've done this story every single year. I've been a reporter in New York about heightened security. The week of Thanksgiving, we talk about it every year with the parade, with the balloons being blown up in New York City. Uh, that is something that is often talked about. This is something very different, of course. We haven't seen something like this in a very long time uh, as it pertains to, you know, a toll area and especially a bridge at a border crossing. So uh, as we wait for more information to come out and we lean on our experts uh, with the FBI and retired and otherwise, Yep. Uh, to find out exactly what we can look for in these coming hours. I know you're well sourced in that department, so if you hear anything on your end, certainly um, get back in touch with us. But in the meantime, Laura, thank you. Laura Engel, live with we us um, here in New York. And we're going to go back to some of the pictures that we had, well, not only live uh, from the scene, uh, but some of the still photos. And here's one. There was another still photo a moment ago, and I don't think we've referenced it on the air, but it is, and this is it right here. It looks to show screen right, the white car, like as if there's a white car airborne. Again, this comes from a Customs and Border Patrol source at the time the still f photograph was taken. You can see that in the upper right side of your screen. So that is just into us. And I'll add in as the headline showed you a moment ago from the FAA that they've closed the airport, the Buffalo area, Buffalo Niagara International Airport is now closed. Uh, Josh School joins us right now. Josh is a uh, national security expert and formerly at the FBI, and you've been watching and listening to all this um, uh, coverage from your career experience, impressions of um, what may or may not happen, uh, have happened or questions that you might have uh, upon hearing about this explosion along the border. So, Colonel, first thing is the FBI and law enforcement have to assume this is a terrorist attack. There's a heightened threat inside the United States and around the globe due to the a war going on in with Israel and Hamas. So that's the first thing. They have to go at it as if it is a terrorist attack. 
What they're piecing together right now is the video from the border, both the Canadian side and the U.S. side, determining what happened, whether this was a, uh, a car rushing to blow, uh, potentially go through the checkpoint, whether this was an actual explosion or whether a car caught on fire. All of that is they're trying to determine right now. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.